What's going on everyone? In today's video, I'm telling you all why the Shimano Stella is the best spinning reel on the market. Bruh, you have lost your mind. The Stella is not even in the same class as the Saltiga. The Saltiga is clearly the best spinning reel. You guys are so dumb. You can't even fish those reels underwater. You can literally fish a van stall under salt water for days and not even have to service it. The van okay, stall's clearly that's enough. the best. What's going on everyone? My name is Ryan, AKA Juno Ryan. And in today's video, we are going over the Vanstall VSX, the Shimano Stella SW 2013, and the Daiwa Expedition 5500H. I understand that we are in 2020 and there's a 2020 Daiwa Saltiga and a 29 Sh 2019 Shimano Stella, but these are the reels that I have. So these are the reels that I'm comparing and contrasting. And a lot of the things that I'm going to say in today's video will apply to those newer reels. Who knows, maybe in the future we'll compare and contrast those two new reels as well. If you just found this video randomly and you have not seen my individual reviews of each of these three reels, be sure to check those out. I dive in more in depth into the components of the reels and whether or not I would recommend them to the average angler and what anglers I would recommend them to. So be sure to check those out. I'll have them linked down in the description. How this video is going to work is I'm going to go through the components, go through each reel component by component and each category will have a winner. So we'll go through things like the spool, the body, the internals, and each individual category is going to have a winner. And then at the end, we will go through overall fishability of the reels, aesthetics of the reels, and who I would recommend what reel to. Category number one is going to be the reels drag. Advertised on these reels websites and in their manuals, the Vanstall VSX in the 200 is advertised at 32 pounds of drag pressure. The Stella is advertised at 25 kilos or a little bit over 50 pounds. And the Saltiga is advertised at 33 pounds. So 33 pounds, something over 50 pounds and 32 pounds. In reality, Shimano is famous for inflating their drag numbers, and I can tell you all just from using the reel over a couple of years, it's in realistically, it's more in that 30 pound range, although I have not got a max drag setting on this reel in order to tell you exactly what I find. The Vanstall is not even in the same class as these reels when it comes to drag performance. So the Vanstall puts out enough drag, but it's kind of a sticky feel. And especially when you have a big fish, it's, you don't feel very comfortable and you don't even feel nearly as comfortable as you would if you were using one of the other two reels. The Shimano Stella uses a patented wave spring that just gives you a silky smooth release when a big fish is pulling line off the reel and it's just amazing. It takes a lot more turns and you can make a lot more micro adjustments with the Stella as opposed to the other two reels. It just has a wide range of drag settings and it also has drag underneath the spool as well as in the top of the spool. So it's a different type of design that you don't see in other spinning reels. The Saltiga, you get a much simpler design than the Stella, but it performs similarly, if not identically, to the more complicated design of the Stella. The top stack of drag with carbon fiber drag washers and an aluminum drag cap, and it gives you plenty of tension while you don't have to take as many turns to tighten down the drag overall. Saltiga drag sound. Stella drag sound. Vanstall drag sound. Honestly, when fighting a big fish, the Stella and the stall sound amazing. The Saltiga sounds kind of wimpy, but sound does not affect the performance, so I'm not gonna let that come into my overall assessment. Overall in this category, it's realistically a tie between the Stella and the Saltiga. I hate ties, so I'm gonna call the Saltiga a winner just because I like taking less turns to tighten down the drag. I can see it totally being a benefit and being able to make micro adjustments, just not for me. So I'm calling the Saltiga the winner here. You know what guys, it's, it's a little dark in here, a little gloomy, a little, little depressing. Why don't we go outside and continue this comparison? Next we'll talk about the spool. All three reels lay line really, really well. The old school Van Stalls really did not lay line very well, just the old school VSs. They had this kind of up and down type curve, which Van Stall for years said it helped your casting ability. It was bogus. And the new VSXs, they really fixed that and it lays line really nice, really flat. Shimano's are pretty good. If they happen to lay line too high or too tall, they always give you a spool shim that you can add in there and it lays line perfectly. The most aesthetic spool by far, I think, 
is that on the Saltiga. I just think it looks amazing with the carbon fiber inserts, the blue accenting the silver. The overall top of it is in aluminum, whereas in Shimano, I think it's a plastic. And I've seen pictures of melted ones, not due to fishing, but due to like spooling accidents and things like that. So the metal, it's a little bit nicer, but to me, here, the clear winner in spools is the Stella. And I'll tell you the reason is because of just the design of the lip. This allows you to cast a little bit better, it allows the line to come off a little bit better than something like the Daiwa or the Stall. So you can see kind of the design of the lip. It's a little bit more, it's not as streamlined, it's not at that angle like the Shimano has. And the Shimano gives you the ability to slightly overspool your reel. So I wouldn't recommend you overspool your reels, but let's say you put the line on really, really tight with the machine, and then you go take a couple casts and it kind of puffs up because that happens to me a lot. You can get away with that with the Stella with this design. With the Saltiga and with the Stall, if you overspool these really at all, what ends up happening is you're gonna get a wind knot. And it's just almost instant. Um, so the clear winner when it comes to spools for me is the Stella. Next, we'll move into the bales and line rollers. Shimano and Daiwa both have a very similar setup. They have a sealed roller. Daiwa has a mag seal in there. Shimano has a bunch of extra seals in there to keep salt and other grime out, as well as stall. Stall seals their roller and protects it. Both of these perform very well. The thing that I don't like about Shimano's is the bail flip itself. So it's not intuitive. You go to push the bail open all the way and you hit kind of a kink here and then it opens. And that causes every once in a while, maybe once in a thousand casts, you not to open the bail all the way. Daiwa's bail flip is much, much more intuitive. Let me freaking grab it out of my bag. Sorry, I don't wanna set him right in the sand. That wouldn't be ideal. Ah. Daiwa's bail flip is much more intuitive and it does a better job overall, in my opinion, than over the Stella. Now, Van Stall is its own beast. It is its own thing. And so it's a bailless reel. You used to see these a lot back in the old days, like in the 80s and 70s, because the simplicity of this really led to less broken parts, especially when spinning reels were fairly new. It was a new concept. And I'll show you guys how this works because it's a little bit differently, different than a normal bail. I'm gonna cast it out. And I catch the line with my finger, bring it down at that 45 degree angle, and I reel it. And now me, someone that's used reels like this for over a decade now, I actually really, really like the manual pickup. I'm a real fan of it. Now for the average person, do I think it's that good? No, not really. And when you're fishing into the wind with wind in your face, the line will come off the roller. That's something that actually happens. So for me, the clear winner when it comes to bales and line rollers in this category is the Saltiga. The Saltiga is really far and away the best with the Stella a close second. And the stall, it fits into that niche for guys that like the manual pickup. In regards to sealing the internals of the reel against the elements, really there is no comparison to a Van Stall. Van Stall is a far and beyond much more sealed than the other two two reels. But the reason is, it was meant for that. It's meant for harsh conditions. It's meant to be fished literally underwater at some periods. And it's just, it's meant for this salt, sand, and beach. That's what, why it has that simple design and the oversized seals. Which it really gives you a tightness that you're reeling against. So the other reels everyone really likes because they're free spinning, they're really easy to turn the handle. Like, everyone calls them smooth, they're silky smooth, right? Van Stall has that stiff feeling and you don't feel like you're getting a premium product, but the reason is, is the oversized seals, the redundancy of the seals is able to keep sand and salt out. If you look right now, what I'm doing is I'm literally dropping this thing in the sand and that's because you can. And literally what you can do is drop it in the sand and then go walk into the ocean and rinse it off with the ocean water. They are that bulletproof when it comes to sand, salt, and the elements. So by far and away, Vanstall at the top, Stella and Saltiga, they are pretty much a reel that you can dunk. They definitely like have a lot of sealing. Stella has a lot of rubber sealing. Dial uses the anti, uh, uses the mag sealed bearings and they keep sand and salt out 
just not to the same degree as the Van Stahl. I, I would be completely comfortable dunking the Stella or the Saltiga every once in a while, but I would feel comfortable fishing this one underwater, and I would feel comfortable not rinsing it off after a couple trips just because I know how well it keeps the elements out. Now let's talk about the bodies. So Stella and Saltiga both use a combination of composite in the rotors and then metal in the bodies. And really, it, it works very well. They combine strength and they reduce weight. And it's a tried and true method that most super spinners are using nowadays. Stella has a little bit of a cheaper feel, if you ask me. Things like this plate right here are plastic. And it just, it overall doesn't have the exact same premium feel, feel that the Daiwa does. However, the Daiwa's finish tends to scrape off very, very easily. So just after just a couple months of use, I already have flicking happening where the reel inserts into the rod. And I've seen many photos online where salt gets into the little crevices here and starts to bubble the finish. So not what you want with a premium product. The stall, on the other hand, goes with a very, very simple monochromatic aluminum finish, just an anodized aluminum finish that I think looks amazing. I really think the stall is the clear cut winner here, and that's just because of the simplicity of the design, how clean it is and how strong it really is. Just that straight, straight up aluminum outside with a really nice fish finish on it it's very very scratch resistant and it does very well in some super harsh conditions i have another one of these reels it's really 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 beat up and i think it still looks pretty good honestly i, I kind of like all the war scars on it but to me the clear cut winner here is a stall with i absolutely have an appreciation for the other two reels but i think just the simplicity of this is just just perfect now let's talk internals I'm not gonna go into the weeds like I did in the individual review videos for these reels. If you wanna see those, absolutely check the links in the description. I already did a video for each one of these guys. But just hitting the wave tops, van stalls, they use a very simple, outdated design. And it's, for the amount of money you're paying, you're not getting a very good design for a spinning reel, just to be blunt. The reason that Vanstall gets away with it is because they use large, over-engineered, very, very high quality parts. So you can get away with that. Main gear in the Vanstall is probably still bigger than it is in both of these reels. And this is actually a smaller overall reel compared to these two. The internals of the Stella are fairly advanced, very kind of complicated if you ever do open them up, but high quality components, very strong gears, and very well sealed up body. You get a backup and a reverse, the way that Shimano makes its gears is they cold forge them. So it leads to a little bit of inconsistencies and, a li and pretty and larger tolerances than you'll find in other high-end reels. Now, cold forging is a great way to make gears, don't get me wrong, and there's nothing wrong with a little bit of play, but you do feel that play in the handle in a Stella, which is not, not really the premium feel that you would expect from a high-end reel. Saltigas, you do get that backup in our reverse. You get a very strong bronze main gear. In this one, I have a stainless steel pinion gear, and it's just a great overall design. The very, very minor tolerances, the way that they machine their gear, so it gives it a solid, literally like zero play feel. There is play, but you just don't notice it as an angler. The big hiccup with the Saltiga is that they use mag seals. I covered it in the original video for the Saltiga, but basically mag seals, you can't service yourself. And so if I dropped this reel in the salt water today and I wanted to take it apart and work on it and get it ready for the morning, just, you know, clean all the parts off, re-oil re the bearings, re-grease the gears. I can't do it because I can't get fluid for those mag sealed bearings. So that really, really sucks. Just honestly, it just sucks makes me recommend the Stella here. I think the Stella is the clear cut winner when it comes to the internals, because number one, you can service it. Number two, it just works. It's just a great design. It's very efficient and it's an extremely strong reel. Check this out, y'all. <laughs> I was just taking a couple casts in between filming sequences and uh, caught a little, uh, little baby ladyfish. Just uh, skipping a little, uh, little swim bait on the bottom. Huh, what do you know? paid off coming out here to film these uh, couple clips. Yeah. Ah. All right, that was a nice, nice change of pace, especially doing these review videos. You know, it gets a little, uh, a little stuffy sitting inside all day. 
Next category is going to be the handles of the reels. Now, the way these categories are working, I know they sound kind of arbitrary, and the points definitely aren't, aren't uh, all created equal. So, you know, the internals are probably more important than the handle of the reel, but trying to break it down for you guys and easily digestible sections. So, handles will be our next category. The Saltiga has a very, very simple design that the only real thing that's lacking is kind of just some sort of rubber seal at the entryway or where the handle connects to the reel. The reason it's not there is for smoothness, so you, you have a real silky smooth retrieve, but it basically leads forces you to take the handle off when you're done after a fishing trip and really rinse it out because there's nothing really stopping salt from building up in certain areas. There's no silly joint or anything there, and it comes standard with a ball, which I love. Stella, I don't know why real companies use this stupid jointed, you know, stupid jointed design. They use it on a lot of different reels, and maybe it's just to be complicated for complicated sake, but I think it's really, really silly, and I think this gold is really gaudy. The stall is very short and honestly this is a very very uncomfortable knob i've used these knobs for decades so i've gotten used to them but realistically it's very very uncomfortable when it comes to handles i'd say the daiwa is the clear cut winner here even with that little uh missing or e even with that little inconvenience of having to take the handle off after a long trip and rinse it out individually when buying a high-end spinning reel or any type of fishing reel i think appearance absolutely matters so I'll give you all my overall assessment on these reels. The Stella, I think the gold looks kind of gaudy, especially in the handle. I think the body lines are a little bit awkward in which they've actually cleaned up in the 2019 version. And just overall, I'm just not the big fan, biggest fan of this color combination. The Van Stall, I think I love the simplistic look to it. Realistically, when I was a kid, them being so cool looking was what made me really, really want one, not because of the surf capabilities of the reel. And I think that's true for a lot of anglers that end up buying these reels. Just, they, they look really cool. You know, not any different than some guy buying a Ferrari because it looks really cool. The Saltiga though is the winner here for me. I think it's the best looking spinning reel ever made. The blues ascending the silvers mixed with the little details that Dial went to, like the carbon fiber inserts in the spool. I, I think they just hit it out of the, hit it out of the park I think it's an amazing looking spinning reel. Obviously beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but these are my opinions on the three reels in front of me. The last category is going to be fishability. All three of these reels perform admirably under tough scenarios and they just, they're just they realistically more than the average angler really needs. Van stalls, the ceiling we've already hit on just gives you the ability to fish in the harshest of harsh conditions when salt and sand are just prevalent. The drag really is the biggest deal breaker for me because you can't land, I'm not gonna say you can't land, but it puts you at a disadvantage against extra large pelagic fish because of its inability to stay smooth at high drag pressures. The biggest deal breaker for the average angler is gonna be the fact that it's a manual pickup. Most guys are not used to using a manual pickup and they're gonna get frustrated and you can't even fish into the wind with it. So that definitely is the deal breaker with the van stall for me. The Stella performs admirably in almost any single fishing category. It casts better than the other two reels, probably better than almost any other reel in, it, in the class. It can take blistering runs from the strongest pelagic fish, and it just does anything that you need it to do outside of you know maybe fishing it underwater like a van stall. My biggest hits on the Stella are a little bit of play in the handle that you don't get with the other two reels, the bail flip, which we've already hit on, and how many times it takes you to twist the drag cap, which could be a pro for a lot of guys. The winner in this category for me is going to be the Saltigo. Overall, it just feels like it fishes the best. The fact that it's a normal bale, not a manual bale, makes it beat the stall there. It has the same drag capabilities as a Stella, and it just feels amazing to use. It's silky smooth while also maintaining a lot of rigidity. It just feels like a very, very strong reel. Overall, the Saltiga has five, the Stella has three, and the Stall has two. Obviously, like I already said, the scoring system is arbitrary, so we'll just get into my overall recommendations on who I would recommend which reel to. The Van Stall, I would really only recommend to surf anglers that like a manual pickup reel. 
If you're fishing in, a condi in conditions where the wind's always in your face, I still wouldn't even recommend this. I would recommend probably the other two or something like a Saragossa that you're not gonna feel that bad if you completely ruin it, you completely bury it in the sand. And it's something like a Saragossa still has decent sealing capabilities. The Stella, I would recommend to anyone in the US that wants a super spinner. It performs in almost every category that you need it to. Realistically, my only hits are the bail flip, which probably won't affect most people, and just how many times it takes you to tighten down the drag, which I've already said could be a pro for the right person. It does anything that you can need it to do and just feels great while you're using it. For tackle junkies or guys outside the US in places like Australia and Japan, I would probably recommend the Saltiga. I just, it's my favorite overall reel to use. And if there, it wasn't for the service issues and the fact that you can't really get the mag seal fluid and service it yourself in the United States, I'd probably recommend this reel over the other two in all categories, but that's just a big deal breaker for me. Overall, y'all, you really can't go wrong with any of these reels. And if a super spinner isn't for you, absolutely check out things like the Shimano Saragossa, the Daiwa BG MQ that just came out. There's great reels in that $200 price range that absolutely will do most things the average angler needs. If you guys like this style of video, make sure to leave it a thumbs up or drop a comment in the section below if you want me to do more videos like this. I appreciate you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in that next one. Later. Oh, missed it.